must belong Each and every one All of us belong In this sacred circle All of us belong Each and every one All of us belong In this sacred circle We are sisters, brothers, children belong in this sacred circle. Welcome to Homecoming, each of us with God and all of us together in spiritual family. What a delight to be here with you and see you all once again. Uh, each and every Sunday, well, we have fun. <laughs> We're regular. Uh, and we join as community and a spiritual family. And welcome, Elizabeth. I mean, it's always a treat uh, to see you. And I think we have some interesting things to uh, to consider today. Uh, we're going to focus on the nature of love and how it flows between each of us and God, uh, and then uh, from God into us, from us to God, God into us, and then out through us to each other. Uh, but before we launch into that whole conversation, as we usually do, let's actually uh, take a couple of minutes here to actually share some love with God. Uh, that sort of sets us up in the proper context, the proper relationship with uh, our Creator, right? So that we can we can share from uh, from a deeper place. So. Uh, uh, let's take a few moments to experience the embrace of worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Eternal Mother, Son, and Infinite Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, our Master, our eldest brother, and our friend. Thank you, Mother Spirit. Thank you, Mother Supreme. Thank you, God, as you manifest in so many ways and minister to us in so many ways in all the different parts of our lives. Help us to stay open to your presence, sensitive, receiving your presence in each moment as we share a little bit of your truth, your beauty, and your goodness with each other here in our gathering of your spiritual family. Amen. Uh, so let's start off by getting a little bit of context. We'll we'll call it kind of review where we've been over these past few weeks uh, uh, in homecoming, uh, and get a sense of where we are as we consider this uh, primal truth of love. So we took a look initially at the nature of this symbolism, which is a cluster of things that remind us of things, really, that help us stay grounded and aware and paying attention to things. That's really the primary service of the symbolism. And uh, if, if we work with it creatively, it begins to give rise to a culture, an actual way of living uh, a live experience in a set of spiritual family relationships uh, with God and with each other. Um, and so we took a look at the, the nurture that we can experience in the parent-child relationship with God uh, and how that leads more and more to relating to each other genuinely as, uh, as spiritual sisters and brothers. And then we looked at the indwelling spirit um, 
that this relationship is not far away and abstract, right? It's not a theoretical reality. Uh, it's a living experience that we can have, uh, intimate relationship with God. And in a sense, one way of understanding what we talked about last week, which is the will of God, uh, or what God hopes for and wants for us to have, uh, for each one of us, uh, is, is that God's will essentially is that we, primarily, initially, is that we share this intimate and ideally uh, really constant experience of companionship with the indwelling spirit. And then we took a little bit of a deeper look last week at how we can align our will with God's will uh, to, to begin to discover the purposes that God has for us as we move through our lives. And one way of understanding God's will, it's kind of an older way, kind of the old the new the Old Testament way. But, but Jesus was very respectful of it as he taught the people in his day. And it has some relevance for us as well, is to understand God's will as a set of uh, what, the, what uh, uh, the prophets called commandments, right? The, the Ten Commandments, etc. So, so what we're going to do now is uh, turning, turn our attention to the centrality of love in our spiritual lives. And there's a connection here. Because God's primary commandment is, in a sense, it's all about love. Uh, and so here's a passage from the teachings of Jesus related to that. Then the spokesman of the Pharisees said, Master, I would like to ask you, which is the greatest commandment? Of course, they were trying to trick him, but Jesus used uh, their poor motivation to good advantage. And Jesus answered, he says, there is but one commandment, right? It's pretty singular. And really, so if we get that one thing right, we are on our way in the spiritual life. And he said, that one is the greatest of all commandments. You shall love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength interesting list of qualities right this is the first and great commandment and the second commandment springs directly therefrom and it is you shall love your neighbor as yourself so let's unpack that just a little bit uh and give us some things to think about uh, and to talk about in the breakout times that we're going to have and in our large group conversation afterwards. So sort of some content to work with. Uh, first, uh, how is it that we love God with these different parts of us, right? Jesus says, we love God with all of our heart, right? So there's an emotional component to this, which seems sort of obvious, but it's worth it's worth focusing on. How do we allow our feelings to to become untethered and and open and flowing toward God? Uh, uh, it's a feeling experience. So all of our heart, uh, uh, all of our mind. So in addition to our feelings, it's our thoughts and our understandings, our concepts of God, which, of course, both emotionally and conceptually, those are always growing right? It's not a static experience. Uh, all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul. So that's interesting. So what is, how do we love God with the soul part of us? Um, I think we, the, the soul part of us is the part that, that senses values, uh, truth, beauty, goodness, dedication, honor, uh, 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 devotion, right? These are soul sentiments. So what we do in, in, in this experience of loving God is we express the deepest heartfelt uh, priorities or values in our lives. So it's not just our human emotions, it's our spiritual sentiments as well. Uh, heart, mind, soul. And then the last in the list is our strength, which is interesting. 
So that, in a sense, refers to our bodies, the acts of, of that we, we pursue in life, how we move through life, the actions we take uh, uh, with our bodies and, and to execute and make things happen in reality. That's a form of loving God as well. Um, so, you know, it's worth, it's worth thinking about these different modalities of the expression of affection. Um, so, yeah, just things to think about. The, the second thought that's expressed there, um, uh, well, uh, the, the second thing I want to share is that I think in the experience of worship, uh, all of these different parts of us really come into, into functionality. Because I think um, our entire personality is involved in this experience of worship, of adoration. Um, and I think the way things are set up, the way we are um, constituted, when we worship, in a sense, all of these modes of loving happen automatically in that or adoration experience. Uh, and, and flow from the experience of worship. Uh, and, and one of the things I'd like to mention is that uh, two of our previous episodes actually have a lot of good teaching on worship. They're the third and fourth full episodes of Homecoming. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I think I can do this fairly quickly and easily. And that is paste the, uh, the uh, link so that if you click on that, you'll get to the list, the playlist uh, of all our uh, of our homecoming gatherings, and you get to the third and fourth full episodes on spiritual reparenting and on prayer and worship, uh, and you've got a lot of good content there on on how to engage in that worship experience. So loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's the first commandment. And then the second commandment also has some surprising detail in it for me. Once I kind of began to dig down a little, little further into the, the, uh, the details of it, Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And what he said was, and this is a, a quote, that that second commandment springs directly from the first. That's interesting. I mean, it goes by so quickly, it's easy to, to, to miss the implication, right? And what that implies for me is that that second commandment of us loving each other cannot really happen the way it should unless we are engaging in the first commandment of loving God. There's a sequence to these things. Uh, because when we love God and we experience God's love for us, there's an empowerment for us to genuinely and with, with spiritual fullness, love each other. Uh, but also in that second commandment is, is another little nugget that's sort of uh, incorporated into it. And that is that Jesus is asking us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That's interesting. I mean, that assumes that we love ourselves well <laughs> and proportionally. Um, and I actually think that we only really love ourselves properly, properly appreciate ourselves, have true self-respect, as the revelators describe it, as a result of regularly experiencing God's love for us. But I, this, I think all of this stuff is profoundly linked up in, in, in a systemic way. Uh, and, and so what that says for me, again, is that it makes the experience of worship that much more important for us. Uh, because in that experience, we we come to a place through uh, taking in God's love, where we properly uh, uh, love and appreciate ourselves, which I don't think we can do just by loving ourselves. I don't think it happens. That's too facile. I think we, we come to a proper appreciation of our own value, and truly uh, uh, love and respect ourselves appropriately as a result of the experience of God loving us. God shows us how to, to look at ourselves and properly evaluate ourselves. Um, so let's look a little bit at the directions that love is flowing in. And I'm going to share screen once again. 
All true love is from God, and we receive the divine affection as we ourselves bestow this love upon our fellows. The love of the Creator appears in the mortal personality by the ministry of the indwelling spirit. Love is dynamic. It can never be captured. It is alive, free, thrilling, and always moving. That's such amazing language. Alive, free, thrilling, and always moving. Um, and I keep coming back to this metaphor as love is, in a sense, lifeblood. It's circulating. It's always in motion, accomplishing its purposes. We can never take the love of God and imprison it within our own hearts. God's love can become real to us only by passing through our personalities as we in turn bestow this love upon our fellows. So the implication here is that love is constantly in motion. It is circulating. And as it circulates, it nourishes and energizes all of the relationships in creation. In fact, for me, it, it, increasingly, it's come to, to, to mean that that love is the fundamental spiritual energy that is coursing through the universe in every moment. It's what makes the universe alive and free, thrilling. It's energizing. So let's look briefly at the various directions that love flows, in a sense, through this great uh, circulatory system of creation. Uh, first, initially, it's it's important to recognize that God is loving us all the time. We just don't normally recognize that it's happening. We're paying attention to other things. So the first way that we, I think, actually experience this great circuit of love is when we come to God in worship. So the first direction of flow that initiates our experience of this, and this to me is very important, is us loving God. I think first we come to God, we love God, and that opens the inner channel for the flow of love. And once that inner channel is wide open because we are expressing our adoration of God, then we can begin to experience God's love flowing into us and nourishing us in these essential ways. So once it's happening in that way, from us out to God and from God into us, then I think it can begin truly to flow out of us and overflow to each other, uh, to our spiritual sisters and brothers all around us. And then it goes further, then it's coming back from them to us, right? So it's further uh, uh, reinforcing and building and growing of the, the movement of this affection. And then lastly, when that flow of love is established between us as spiritual sisters and brothers, it actually moves back to God as the Supreme in a way that is profoundly satisfying to the heart of God. And this is not an insignificant part of the whole, the whole uh, uh, equation. Um, it gives God a profound form of satisfaction when we love each other. We are gifting God in a very special way when we love each other. God delights in seeing his children engage in, in loving acts and caring for each other. So that's a special part of the whole process. Um, I, the last thought I'm going to share, and then I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, is that love, I, th I think, we, we think of it too simplistically. I think it's an incredibly nuanced reality. Uh, in fact, my sense is that each and every time we act out our love, it is actually a unique manifestation of spiritual reality that will never occur again in the same way in all the rest of eternity. So each act of love is really remarkably precious. Uh, and, and sort of in support of that, here's, here's a last passage I want to share with you. Love unselfishness, which is an interesting paraphrase, love being unselfishness, lack of centeredness on self, right? 
altruism, must undergo a constant and living readaptative interpretation of relationships in accordance with the leading of the spirit of truth. So Jesus and our mother spirit help us with this through the spirit of truth. Uh, it's a cooperative partnership. Love must thereby grasp the ever-changing and enlarging concepts of the highest cosmic good of the individual who is loved. And then love goes on to strike this same attitude concerning all other individuals who could possibly be influenced by the growing and living relationship of one spirit-led mortal's love for other citizens of the universe. So this phenomenon ricochets out, ripples out and affects people all around when we love even one person. And then the last thing in this paragraph, they say, and this entire living adaptation of love must be affected in the light of both the environment of present evil, meaning our current limitations and uh, which are marked, right? Where we have all kinds of uh, stuff affecting us. And yet love must flow out in that context of a very challenging environment. So both the, the environment of present evil and the eternal goal of the perfection of divine destiny. So this to me is an amazing section that, it, uh, that unpacks how unique and how, uh, really how critically interdependent we are with spirit in executing love. I, I think love only really happens in its full way when we do it in partnership with, with God, when we love each other in partnership with God. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, my takeaway here at the end is that every real act of love is a never, a never to be duplicated divine manifestation, with a divine partnership that we have the opportunity for with God. And with that, uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to Elizabeth for some of her thoughts on uh, the nature and flow of divine love. Please, my dear sister. Yeah, thank you, Marvin, once again for, you know, shining um, spiritual light on this quality or experience, a reality, actually, of love. Um, I really don't have, in a way, much more to say about it than you did, because um, I thought so, so often run in the same channels. So I realize I have to maybe discard a lot of what I was going to say. Well, you can you can <laughs> but, repeat but it. But at the same time, I, I think everybody here can offer their beautiful comprehension of love. We can all add to this conversation and expand our appreciation of what it is. And you know me, I always start with paradise and the paradise deity, trinities. And to say that God is the original personality from the beginningless beginning and the source of all life and all personalities um, in the grand universe. And love is the fundamental relationship between personalities. And as we've talked about in past homecomings, God's first creative act in the eternal past was to create the eternal mother, son, and together they created the infinite spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the God of action. And that these three uh, beautiful original persons of the undivided paradise Trinity are the original divine spiritual family. And their relationship is one of loving interdependence. They're accomplishing the work together. And we can speak of this undivided trinity as our divine father and mother. And their nature is love. All their activity is pervaded by love and by goodness. They create with love, right? And their supreme desire is for all of us creatures at every level of the universe. Um, to realize and actualize this highest type of love, right? For our divine parents and for each other. And we love to deeply study the creative acts of God. It's like you said, so thrilling. It's exhilarating to think about. 
And we see that their divine intention was, is, and always will be to create all kinds of personal beings and beings like us with certain spiritual endowments and always with one primary purpose, huh? And so what is that primary purpose? I think we know that it is to become perfect in eternity in our sphere like our divine parents, and that the highest, best way to accomplish this is through love and by love and in love mm -hmm. with God and with and for each other. Mm -hmm. We become real and real personalities in the universe. We survive in eternity and endure as eternal personalities by becoming love. That's what makes us real. So this is their intention. And Marvin, I just love that you use that passage of that love is dynamic. Uh, it can never be captured. It's always flowing. I just love that. And so when I contemplate for myself this dynamic quality of divine love, I invariably think of our human self-system. I think of our physical body and our circulatory system. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's <clears throat> biochemical, electrical, but I think of the circulation system of blood, which it brings life-giving oxygen and nutrients to every cell in our body. And without it, we would die on the physical and the material level. And then I think of mindal energy, the flow of, 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 of thought and feeling in us. This is also a divine gift to us. And it flows. The thoughts are ever flowing. And our job is to really be allow the spirit to spiritize them, <laughs> elevate them uh, to the highest expression. And then finally, um, uh, this divine love is, is, is a spiritual energy. It's a spiritual energy that, as we've been talking about, flows from the Godhead in paradise, and it's meant to be transmitted. So I really see it flowing through every being in the universe and returning to paradise. And we know that we're not yet doing this perfectly, <laughs> because if this was perfectly realized, well, it would be the end of this evolutionary age. <laughs> um, so we have a long, long way to go. And the reason is that we are imperfect. We are still ignorant of who we really are. And there are impedances in the flow. It's almost like, I was thinking, it's kind of a little gross, but that there's plaque in our arteries, which impedes mm. the flow of blood. In a way, there's plaque in our minds, with which is you know rigid ideas or outdated belief systems that also restrict the passage of more you know, enlightened thinking. And the same way, you know, with our this spiritual energy of love. Um, that's a whole other topic, but it boils down to fear and woundedness. You know, there's a certain woundedness that we come into this world with. Um, and these things impede the, the, the flow of this spiritual energy of love in all of us. And our job is to um, see that, recognize it, and we can remove it by our creative free will by choosing to love. And I just want to say in closing that for me, the pivotal moment in my life, the biggest transformative moment in my life was when I realized that God lives in me and desires that I become like God and that God lives in everyone in the same way. And it's a tremendous equalizing realization that I'm no better, no worse. You are no better, no worse. We are all equally children of God with different kinds of potentials, but we are all spiritually the same. And when I realized that, then how can I not love myself as a child of God? Mm. Knowing my parents, my divine parents truly love me and want me to become like them. And I want to become like God. And then I realized, well, I want to help everybody else become all the God they can be, realize the potentials. That's, for me, the highest, best kind of action 
It's that cosmic good wanting that for not what I think they need, but what does God want for this person? Yeah. And, and, and nurture that. Do what I can to help that person become all they can be. Um, grow up to truly be um, God-like. I'll stop there because I want to hear what other people have to say and I want to worship with you. Right. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as always, I, I, I'm always enriched by what you share, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you. Two takeaways for me. One is that I hadn't focused enough is that the three persons of the, of the Trinity actually love each other. Yes. I haven't really yes. focused on that enough. That's kind of a little new. They actually love the father and the son and the spirit love each other. Yes. And the, the other is that, that at the other end of the spectrum, there are countless millions and millions and millions of, of our sisters and brothers out there who suffer along without any real deep sense of love, like we're talking about, who yeah. are going hungry. And we really need to be compassionate, deeply compassionate for their plight and, and moved to engage in ministry, to share with them the truth of that love that's available for them and help them to experience it. And you know, Mom, I just want to say that has to do with our spiritual eyes. Yeah. And one of the greatest things Jesus ever said was just if you see, judge your neighbor and you see the speck in your neighbor's eyes, well, take the timber out of your own eyes, you know, that's blocking you from yeah. seeing who they really are and responding, you know, with that loving desire to do good for them. Anyway. Yes. Yes. Just saying what we already know. <laughs> Well, but it's important to remind ourselves. So let's now move uh, to, to what is really critical in this whole, whole equation, which is where this experience of the flow of love begins and moves into us. And it begins with our worship, our adoration of God, our coming to God as a little child and saying, I love you. Uh, uh, and please pick me up, hold me, let me experience your affection for me. So we're going to move into that worship space for our... Uh, well, we'll take about seven or eight minutes to allow ourselves to have a good time for the breakouts and our conversation afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead, get relaxed, sit back, get ready to worship everybody and take a few deep breaths and uh, make yourselves uh, physically comfortable. And I'm going to share screen uh, and uh, put our worship application up. Please enjoy. We'll see you with, on the other side of our worship experience.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Eternal Mother Son. Thank you, Infinite Spirit. Amen. Well, I hope that was as enjoyable for you as it was for me. <laughs> Always quite the adventure, uh, this experience of worship. So we are uh, going to move now into our breakout conversations about the nature of love. And I encourage you now and during our conversation time in the large group, uh, feel free to get up, stretch, move, take care of bodily needs as you feel moved as you need to. Uh, uh, do that variously individually. And we're going to move now into our breakout conversations. And uh, I actually, if you give me a minute, have some uh, uh, questions that I can put in the chat box. Three questions. How have you experienced loving God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength? These are in the chat box now. How have you experienced the different directions of the flow of love? in your life and how have you experienced the uniqueness of each act of love in which you've uh, engaged uh the nuances the remarkable uniqueness of each expression of affection from god to us and from us to each other and back again to god so elizabeth please go ahead when you're ready we'll send folks to the uh three four person breakout you're going room. now i think so let's open it up to conversation now on this theme of love uh, and the circulation of the divine affection. Uh, so we're going to go first with uh, uh, Margreta from uh, Oregon in, in the U.S. Nice to see you. I think first time. Wonderful to have you here. And then uh, my, my good buddy Thomas up in the Seattle area. Go ahead, Margreta. Thank you, Marvin. And I really appreciate I've just been studying Urantia just shortly, so I'm very new. Um, and this is more of a housekeeping thing. I was wondering, is it possible to get the notes beforehand? Um, I, I do better when I can print them out, uh, just so then I make notes on them. Um, I don't that's know a, if that's possible, but. No, it's a good question. Uh, part of it is, we're we're sort of running just to be ready to prepare to do it Sunday yes, morning. Right. So so my working notes I I don't send out, but what you have is the description that goes out Saturday morning that describes the content of it, and then you have the video afterwards, which you can look at and stop and slow down and take notes, so you right. can actually get all of the content in the video that gets put up in the playlist. I hope that's helpful. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good question. But yeah, anything else that you wanted to share? First of all, welcome. And how long have you uh, uh, been uh, uh, familiar with uh, the Urantia book, out of curiosity? Well, I've known of the Urantia book for, I don't know, maybe 35 years. Um, but I studied Buddhism real intensely for many years. In the last uh -huh. four years, I've been intensely studying the Course of Miracles. Oh. And as I started to more connect more with a personal God and my relationship with Jesus, I found that I didn't, I, it wasn't quite, and I'll, you know, it would, wasn't quite doing it for me. And then I, I don't know, I just somehow got reconnected and started actually studying Urantia, which is very, I think I came to it through the last part four because it started to give me more, because I grew up Christian Science, so I didn't. I really wasn't that connected with Jesus. Uh -huh. And then it's been a little hard. The thir first three parts of Urantia papers, <laughs> I have to <laughs> say, the the terminology and everything has been a challenge. So, uh, and how did you come to homecoming? How did you find out about it? Uh, it took me a while to find out, but I've been, you know, looking at the different Urantia and uh, then. Urantian um, videos that Derek, I think, and oh, Chuck yeah. put out. I've been watching those a lot. Yeah. Excellent. 
Well, I think what you'll find here with Homecoming is we really deal with just about all the material in the text, but really focused on the central spiritual truths and in a way that hopefully will be easy for, for folks in your situation to, to assimilate and really work with is, is the core experience of what Jesus was talking about, this different way of life in spiritual family relationships. So welcome. It's, it's a delight to see you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, Tom Peary, my friend Thomas, go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, I'd like to respond to uh, the second and third uh, question you had. And um, I'm um, I'm suggesting this because I think there's quite a bit of evidence that supports it, uh, particularly those that have been parents and grandparents. Um, I think that um, God loves us so much that he introduces himself introduces his love to us at our birth from the moment oh. we're born no need to wait until we're you know we can understand language and hear these words called love and all that but we're introduced from birth and that comes in the form of a very of a loving parent um i think mothers seem to understand this have this experience of this profound love they have for their child and most healthy men do as well um, I had, um, when our first son was born, fortunately, I had a chance to have a long spiritual life. Um, and while I was hadn't rehearsed the idea of having this profound love for my newborn son, when he was born, I was struck. I was overwhelmed by the amount of love that I felt for our son. And because I had, I knew, and I knew where that came from. I was clear as a bell on where this sense of the feeling of love, this profound sense of feeling. And as we as parents know that we then, uh, all, of our, all of our thoughts, all of our longings, how do we protect, nurture, support, care for, um, um, plan for that child? These are the characteristics of our Father in heaven for us. Mm. So as a child, um, even though we're absolutely selfish, you know, pretty much me, 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 we are then introduced to that experience of a mother and father's um, love. And that then becomes our initial experience. And of course, the parents have this wonderful opportunity to experience what I think is a bestowal of this love. Because again, I wasn't prepared for it. But certainly when our son was born, it was this overwhelming sense that it happened in an instant of time. Even though I did not necessarily ask for it, I was prepared for it. I had already given God consent to have that love from him through me to our son. Great, great. Thank you, Thomas. That's, uh, that's, that's a, a very significant addition to the conversation. Because when, when I sort of talked, and Elizabeth and I both talked about the, the, all the different directions that love flows in, we neglected to talk about the experience of being a human parent in a human family, loving our children. And of course, in a good family, experiencing as a child, the initial uh, uh, powerful impacts of love from from really good and devoted parents. Mm -hmm. and, and also, again, I, I mentioned the spiritual reparenting video in particular, because many of us have not had that experience or have had mm -hmm. the opposite. So, but it's re remediable. It can be remedied, right, yes. in the in, in the spiritual relationship. So, thank you, Thomas. We're going to go now to uh, to Lee and then Eric, Nancy, uh, uh, and it's wonderful to see you here, Tom. <laughs> A delight. Uh, 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 Lee, go ahead, please. Yes, I was in the same subgroup as uh, uh, Thomas and Jimmer, and Jimmer and I, uh, being grandparents, uh, uh, reflected on our love for our grandchildren, which is, you know, a little different uh, perspective uh, as that of a parent. Uh, but I agree with Thomas, uh, the, there's an aura, I, I've been at many births because I was a, in the uh, uh, delivery room as an Air Force corpsman and back in my day. And my daughter, I actually delivered uh, with the help of a midwife back in the day when midwifery was not, uh, uh, medically as recognized as it is today. But uh, there is something 
born at that time that's more than just a potential child of God. It's something uh, that's there that are, there is a love there that is uh, so precious and and uh, unique with each each child. So my contribution was I participated in the walkathon for the elementary school where my daughter's in kindergarten, my granddaughter. And um, as these uh, little kids walk, most of them ran round and round and they would stop at our table and I would put a mark on the back of their shirt to show they did one lap. And I give them a little pat on the shoulder as they, they, they continue their run or their walk. And then they were there blowing bubbles at our table. And some of the kids just stopped in the middle of it and just twirled around in the bubbles, just being so in the moment. And I saw, I had a personal revelation of these little children of God. Most of them have their indwelling spirit now. And uh, as Jesus said, you know, let those little children come to me, he said, when they tried to shoo them away. Uh, suffer them not, for of such, of such is the kingdom of God and or the kingdom of heaven. And I, I got it. I got it again right then and there. Mm, that's delightful, Lee. Yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing how God provides so many venues within which we can begin to discover what 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 our Father, Mother God is trying to show us. You know that affection and the. I love the the image of the children flitting around with the bubbles. That's that's delightful, and and it's, that's our situation. I think when we really get into the heart of the family, uh, the spiritual family experience. It is absolutely exhilarating and delightful for us. Uh, and, and we delight like little children, like with the bubbles. So I can really relate. Thank you. Thank you. It was, uh, not, uh, it was not that to complete the lap. It was at that moment, it was just the pureness of being alive and experiencing that moment. Yeah. Which allowed me to experience that moment too. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lee. Uh, Nancy, wonderful to see you here, sister. Welcome to Homecoming. Thank you, Marvin. Wonderful to see you and Elizabeth and everyone. So, you know, the ways we've experienced love, first of all, we could have a meeting for four hours because there are so many different things to love. Marvin, you said it in the beginning. I love ice cream. I love the Beatles. I love my Corvette. I love the sunsets. I love the trees. I love this. But we're talking about children. Now we we have our kids. And as, um, God, who was just talking about the joy when their child was born? It's like a love that you could never experience. And it's a job we are given with no training. It's the only job with no training. So you have to put your faith in God that you're going to like, you know, not twist the baby's head around. So I think that's faith. And then the love for our kids is so overwhelmingly strong. However, then you have grandkids. Ah, you didn't think you could love more than your own kid? Then you have a grandkid and you're exploding with love. That's a whole different level. And and to watch, oh, just love. Love is grand. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to stop. Just love, 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 love. Thank you. And, and God is love. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. And then, yeah, children and then grandchildren. Uh, I, I sometimes reflect that, in a sense, the Trinity are, are our grandparents, you know, and, and down here in the local part of the creation, we have Jesus and uh, our, our eldest brother and our mother spirit. So there are lots of levels of parental love and lots of levels of being a child of God. And we, we have quite an adventure waiting for us. Thank you. But Bill and Kay, go ahead. And then and then Eric. I just wanted to point out that the experience of parenting is very basic to our development. We all know that. Uh, I think that one of the reasons why it is so basic is that it is our very early opportunity 
to act in cooperation with God to impress love upon another being, and that being the child. And it is so critical that that gets done well in the early life. It, it The book says it is cosmically, eternally significant what happens in those first very few years. And we don't focus on it as something that we're doing as cooperating with God. It isn't a matter of taking it on exclusively. We don't realize that God is still involved in that, that the love that's flowing through us to that baby is the love of God and that we're getting a feedback from it. We are getting an individual separate feedback from the love that is flowing through us. It's miraculous. And it is something that is designed in. It's something that's got to happen if you have sexual hunger and you perform your responsibilities under that, uh, the consequences of it. It's just, yeah. it's just genius, of course, <laughs> but it, it conveys love. Yes, it's kind of like kind of like God ensures that we're going to have that parent-child experience almost despite ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and I won't say God tricks us into it, but but yeah. in some fashion oh. it's like, you know, we got to get these little animals to have this amazing experience and how are we going to get them to do it, you know? So yeah, the experience of family I think for many people doesn't start off as a high and noble sentiment. But it ends up there for those of us who yeah. are who are sensitive to spiritual truth. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I love it. <laughs> Kay, anything you wanna you wanna add to supplement well, uh, your your mate's great insight here? <laughs> actually, actually, I I think God built in a very nice gift um, in in the process of producing children. It's it's just really quite quite the wonderful experience just to be able to produce the child to be able to have sex in other words <laughs> well well go ahead go ahead finish please but there's there's it, nothing prepares you for what happens when you make that connection with your child whether it's right then or or it's later but I have just one quick thing I wanted to mention. Uh, having gotten together with some old friends uh, this weekend, I, I was thinking when I hugged um, the woman that that love I had for her, because they're old and very dear friends, um, was something akin to connecting with God. Mm. Um, there was just this sense of someone I've known so long and loved so much and such nostalgia and fondness. And somehow it just struck me as being similar to, to my connection with God. Wow. Wow. You, you share two things that for me are very significant contributions to our conversation one that I had not thought about understandably because I'm a man, right? <laughs> and that is there is a, an astonishing experience of parental love that a woman gets to have by gestating and giving birth to a new being that, that is then a personality, a person. But to have the experience of participating in the creation of that new child, what an amazing manifestation of love. Uh, and and I'm excited that half the human species has that experience, and a little envious, but but hey, <laughs> we we each have our domain. <laughs> and then the 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 second thing uh, that you shared really relates to the the piece for me of loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, our bodies. Right when we hug each other. There's a manifestation of divine spiritual love that is physically transmitted. That is very a very important part of our experience down here as material beings of the the, the experience of love, loving and being loved. 
And uh, so thank you for adding that to the conversation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Foster, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, th thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Marvin and Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and everybody who's participating. It's a wonderful group. Um, and um, uh, yeah, the breakout, very helpful. Um, I, I would just a, a brief mention that uh, not, not all of us feel that intense love for children, for our children or grandchildren. Uh, we feel love, you know, I mean, I certainly did for mine uh, and caring and uh, acceptance and those in respect and those, those are all parts of love. Um, but uh, it wasn't as intense, maybe partly because I worked in childcare with young children and so I was spreading it around. But uh, uh, and uh, grandchildren are one reason they're easier to love more is that you don't see them as often. You don't spend twenty four seven with them, and <laughs> you, know, you don't have a, you don't get your buttons pushed by them so much, or or you know uh, uh, have to deal with the negative side of uh, parenting, which is also there. You know, to be realistic, but uh, that's all I'd say. Good to be with you. No, good to good to have you here with us, Foster. And I think your comment is is quite worthwhile for us to consider. Sometimes love isn't all grand and glorious. Sometimes it's very mundane and it's a lot of hard work. And sometimes it's even messy. <laughs> but I think it's all love. And I think even the messy and, and uh, mundane and arduous parts of it are really quite, quite a, uh, a worthwhile part of the journey. So I really appreciate your mentioning, uh, uh, Foster. Always, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, Dale Ann, I think you have our closing comment, and then we'll have a a, a, a quiet moment of uh, of worship uh, to experience that elemental love of God for us, and then uh, move to a close. Go ahead, please, Dale Ann. Um, I love this and uh, different expressions of love. Um, I just want to interject a thought. I hear a lot of parents say, "I never felt this kind of love until I had children." And there's often an, an assumption that if you don't have children, you've never experienced that kind of love. And we're all different. How we discover that kind of love can be different for different people. And I know I used to, that used to bother me when I'd hear parents because I wanted to have children and I didn't have them. Now I love it when I hear parents say that because I've experienced that myself in other people's children, in my sister's children, and for other adults and other children. Uh, because I went through a spiritual change in which my heart opened way more than it had been before. And so um, I now have an experience of love that I didn't used to have. And mm. I think some of my natural instincts as a woman have transferred to other people you know um that that mother instinct is still there and it's transferred to other people mm. so there are all different ways of experiencing that kind of love and i i just want to put a word in for us single people <laughs> mm -hmm. well i that some of us know that experience we just yeah. got to it in a different way you know. Well, I a hundred percent agree with you, uh, and was sort of sort of saying something similar in just the previous comment, and so I'm very much with you, Dale Ann. Uh, what's very interesting to me is that the way they describe the experience that every single one of us will have of moving on from this life onto the next life and into the eternal journey is the experience of par of both being a child and the experience of parenting children will become the the uh, the gift to every single human being that progresses, whether it's here in this life or in the next life, whether it's through other people's children or helping to raise the children of, uh, you know, and the, the higher ups and higher experience. The experience of parenting and being a loving parent to a child in a devoted fashion is an experience that is a universal one that is there for each and every one of us. So I really appreciate your, your, and there are lots of different pathways to, to get to that experience. So 
Thank you, Dale Lynn. Very much appreciate it. Uh, well, wonderful. W what a what a rich sharing with many facets and adding so much to uh, to our consideration of the nature of love and how it flows from God to us, from us to God, God to us, and among each other. Yeah, in in this remarkable spiritual family. Uh, let's take a little bit of time now and and cap off our experience in a closing uh, time of quiet worship. We come to you, great God, who is with us in so many ways, maternally and paternally, showing up as our sisters and brothers, loving us and allowing us to love them, showing up as our children, showing up as our parents, some of it wonderful and some of it challenging. But you have graced us with this journey of discovery and an essential part of that discovery experience is this amazing reality of your love, your affection for us and how we can share it with each other. So thank you. And we go forward now in company with you, with you in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. Help us to stay grounded in your presence uh, and loving you and being loved by you. Amen. Well, what a Amen. another wonderful experience. Thank you. Uh, you can all unmute and say uh, uh, adieu, and we will see each other next week in Bye. Homecoming. We'll be considering uh, uh, eternal life, awakening on the higher worlds, resurrection. So mm -hmm. wonderful to be with you all. Come back next Thank week. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.